Hey Haunters, welcome back. So today we're gonna to be doing a brand new project. So as you can see behind me, um, I have a new alien themed project or maybe apocalypse themed, apocalypse themed project that I've been working on. So this year in uh, my haunted walkthrough, um, the main uh, interior is actually going to be alien slash apocalypse nuclear meltdown kind of themed. Um, so these guys are gonna be one of my centerpieces as you first walked in. They're actually gonna be mounted on a wall. They're not gonna be freestanding as you see here. Um, and I've actually installed some green lighting for the interior and they're gonna look really great at night and I'll have another update once they're actually installed when we're closer to Halloween. I know I haven't posted a video in a long time. I've been really busy with work and uh, ordering parts for these guys, but it's finally finished and I'm really excited to share uh, how I made this with you. Um, so let's get started. Alright guys, so first things first, I started painting these large cardboard tubes that I bought at Home Depot white, and I used the absolute cheapest paint that Home Depot sold, I think it was like $7, and I just covered them up as a base coat just because it was yellow with black lettering and I didn't want you to see anything underneath. So I went ahead and covered it up with that. And then next, I used some metallic trim that I found in the garden section of Home Depot, and I did that around the top and bottom edges of both tubes. And I started with a green top coat, and the green paint that I'm using is the like 50 cent paint from Walmart. It's like really cheap acrylic paint, and I basically use it for everything. So we used about nine bottles of that. And my good friend Mary helped me out. You can follow her on Instagram right here. So yeah, that metallic trim that I got, it's sticky on one side, so you just peel off the backing and then stretch it around like tape, and then you can cut it pretty easy, and it gives a nice effect. And I didn't want it peeling up, so then I just hot glued the top and bottom so that it would stay put. And then I went and traced out a square hole for the window of the capsule, and then I started painting some hazard lines on the top and bottom so I'm using painters tape just to block out an area and then more 50 cent Walmart paint and it's bright yellow and I'm just gonna fill that all the way in I only did one coat it actually covered it pretty well you could see some green underneath but it kind of gave a nice worn effect that I really liked so I just left it so now I'm doing some diagonal strips to fill in with the black just to overlay the stripes once the yellow had dried so we went through a lot of tape and I just painted it in black. It's like a glossy black, and it actually came out really nice. It's really important not to paint over the edge of the tape, which I almost did a few times, especially because it kept rolling away from me because it was so windy that day. And then the best part of the whole project is peeling off all the tape. It's so satisfying. And ta-da! I think it came out really great. It looks like a nuclear warhead thing. And then I just cut out the square window. I did the corners with a utility knife and then cut the whole thing out with my handy dandy skill saw. And then I traced out the interior piece on some cardboard with some marker on some cardboard for like, uh, as a frame for the window. And then I cut the whole thing out with scissors, and you better believe my hand was cramping up by the end of that. My mom actually says drinking pickle juice helps with cramps, but she is not to be trusted. So I cut that whole thing out, and then I cut out the interior, and I was left with the frame. Then I went ahead and put some marks on a wooden dowel and cut up some really teeny pieces with a hacksaw and then I'm going to use those inside some fake nuts well they're real nuts but that way I'll be able to glue them on and then I just hot glued each piece into there it's really important to burn yourself during this process because if you're not suffering for your art are you really creating anything and then you're gonna go ahead and just glue those onto the cardboard frame 
it looks really neat right here and then i realized they're super crooked and out of order on the left you can see there but i was happy with it anyway so after i glued all those more 50 cent paint from walmart and this time i used a metallic finish that i actually really liked it looks a lot darker than it is it actually came out a lot lighter once it dried which is like the opposite of how paint works so who knows and i also painted in on top of the little wooden dowel just to give a whole appearance that it's part of it and I did that for both of the frames then I went ahead and took a poster frame from Michaels and I just took out the plastic insert and traced some like jagged edges with a marker and then you could actually cut it with a scissor so I didn't have to use a glass cutter or anything and then I just hot glued it to the inside and it stuck pretty well they are really sharp though, so I'm going to make sure they're out of the way so no one scrapes themselves. So then I sprayed the interior with some spray adhesive, just to put some foil in there, and my butt came out. And I just stuck the foil in there, and I actually didn't hold all the way, so I had to tape with some packing tape on the top and bottom, but... The window's going to be at eye level, so you won't really see it. And then I just hot glued the frame over the window, and it started coming together. I didn't do the hazard stripes all the way around just because these are going to be mounted on a wall so you're not really going to see behind it so I didn't think to go all the way around. And just shove some glue underneath. Then I mixed some water in a bottle with some more 50 cent Walmart paint and I just shook it up and kind of poured it all over it. I use a similar method to make my tombstones, so you should check out the faux sign tutorial for more on that. And I just kind of dripped some fluorescent green paint and let it kind of drip down with gravity. And I used a different shade of green on the top. And then now I'm going to make the PVC structure that holds the heads in the window. So don't ask me for measurements because I don't know what they are. and. The way I did it didn't even come out right, and I had to use really long screws to hold it in place because it was too short to fit inside. So, measure twice, cut once. And I'm basically making a letter T that's upside down, and I'm screwing it in from the left and right side, and then the vertical part is going to be where the head is mounted onto. And this idea actually worked out really well, I just wish I had measured it right the first time. Because if this was done in regular speed, you would see just how much I'm struggling to get that screw into that PVC. And I used some like folded up cardboard to like make it thicker, and then I couldn't see the hole where I had drilled before, and it was a mess. But it finally got in there, and it's actually pretty solid. So I'm just stuffing some newspaper into a plastic bag, and then I'm going to duct tape it together. And then that's going to be the form that the mask is going to sit on for the head. It's much cheaper than styrofoam heads. I just shoved the mask on there. It looked perfect. Just to test fit, and I measured. And I cut the PVC shorter, and then I'm just pressure fitting, well, friction fitting it into place, as you can see there. It just kind of sits. And then I'm tracing a hole for the dryer tubing. It's like a little plastic insert. And that's going to connect them together. So I'm just going to use my skill saw and cut that out on both sides. And there you have it. And then I have some green light bulbs in on the top here, and I have some extension cords connecting them together. So I'm actually going to hide the cord in the dryer tubing that connects them together so you won't really see them there. But the light just kind of chills in a good spot that'll light up the inside and I'm just happy with it just hanging out there. So those are going to connect with that dryer tubing. And this is the finished product. I haven't decided if I'm going to run a fog machine through it yet, but I really love how it came out and I really love how easy it was and it was actually really cheap, which I was surprised about. Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you leave a like. If you didn't, don't tell me because it'll hurt my feelings. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little notification bell if you want to be notified every time I post a new video. And I promise I will be doing that more often very, very soon. Okay, thanks for watching guys and happy haunting.